we present our work on disentangling spoof trees for generic phase anti-spoofing. There are three challenges in phase anti-spoofing. First, previous work mainly focused on design a model for print replay attacks only or 3D mask attacks only. However, in practice, the attackers may use all possible spoofs to attack the system. Therefore, a generic model to handle different spoofs is very necessary. Second, we need a proper way to mitigate the issue of limited anti-spoofing data. Most of these anti-spoofing databases are collected in a constrained environment, and the environment variation and subject variation are very limited compared to other face task databases, such as face recognition and face alignment. In addition, some specific types, such as impersonation makeup and silicon mask, are very specific and hard to find, such that there is only a few samples in the databases. Third, most of the previous model are either live or spoof classifier or live spoof regressor. We want to have a model that can explain its own decision as the spoof cue are not clear even for the human understanding. To tackle those problems, we are motivated by explore the subtle patterns introduced by the spoof medium such as digital screen, uh, printed photograph, or mask. We call those patterns a spoof trace showing here, the spoof trees can visually explain why a spoof is a spoof. For example, the spoof trees for replay attack contains high frequency Morio patterns. The spoof trees for print attack are mainly based on the color distortion. The spoof trees for makeup are those artificial makeup strokes such as eyebrow. In this work, we design a game architecture to disentangle the spoof faces into spoof traces with its live counterpart and accordingly estimate the spoofness. We expect the model to work on multiple spoof attacks. Specifically, we adopt a unit structure for our generator. Given an input phase, our generator will output a set of spoof trace elements from different scales. Each element has its own semantic meaning, such as color distortion, content pattern, and texture pattern. On the right-hand side image, we show the difference between the model using multi-scale representation and the model not using it. The model used multi-scale representation contains significant less artifacts compared to the one using it. In the bottleneck of the generator, we use additional layers to predict a binary map to represent live or spoof. For the discriminator, we also adopt the multi-scale mechanism. We introduce three discriminators, D1, D2, D3, working at three different phase resolution. For each discriminator, it will output two maps where the first map is trying to distinguish it between the real life versus the reconstructed life. And the second map will try to distinguish between the real spoof versus the synthesized spoof. Each discriminator follows the design of patch gain, which is essentially a fully conventional network. To train our model properly, we deploy three steps at each training iteration. The first step is the G step. The generator will estimate the spoof trees and the spoofness map for a given input phase. The spoof trees will be supervised by the gain loss and uh, L2 regularization. The spoofness map will be supervised by the ground truth where zero map represent a live map and the one map represent a spoof. In the second step, which is a D step, We'll leverage the spoof trees from the step one to reconstruct the live counterpart and warp the trees and synthesize new spoof faces. Both the synthesized image and the reconstructed image will send with the real image to the discriminator to distinguish between the real and the synthetic. 
Thanks to the estimated spoof trees, the sensor size spoof come with the ground truth. So we have the third step, which is the additional training step. The sensor size the spoof will be fit into the generator to estimate the spoofness and the spoof trees. Both spoofness map and the spoof trees will be supervised by the ground truth. We evaluate our proposed method on two testing scenarios, known spoof attacks and unknown spoof attacks. In the scenario of known spoof attacks, all testing spoof types are seen during the training phase. We test our model on three major databases, ULU, SSW, and SSWM. So in the three table, the proposed method has outperformed the previous approach and achieved the state-of-the-art performance. For the unknown spoof attack scenarios, the testing spoof types is unknown during the training phase. As we can see from the table, the proposed approach has outperformed the state-of-the-art performance on most of the unknown spoof types, which show that the superiority of the proposed method. Here we show some of the examples of the disentangling result. The model can work on many different attacks, such as print, replay, 3D mask, makeup, and partial attacks. In addition, the spoof trees can be utilized to synthesize the new spoofs, which can further be used for training. This will help to increase the variation of some spoof types with a few samples. Uh, also, the proposed approach can generate more realistic and effective spoof samples than some previous data augmentation methods, such as warping, corping, or brightness change. In summary, this work, we tackle generic face and spoofing and propose a novel model to disentangle the spoof traces from a given face. We utilize the spoof trees to synthesize new data and uh, enhance the training we achieve the state-of-the-art performance on different testing scenarios such as ULU, SSW, and SSWN. Thank you. For more detail, please visit our project page and check our open source code on GitHub. If you have more questions, please visit our live session.